long story. <laughs> I've been a supporter of the club since I was four. The family have always been fans of uh, of the club. My dad decided to take us to a game because he used to be a big fan of County. I got the bag, got involved from then. Haven't missed a game, home and away. It's been my life a lot of it, lot of it really. My mother worked for the club, my father did a bit for the club and now perhaps I'm doing my bit. And that's how it's been all my life to be honest. Gareth Rowlands, uh, volunteer and uh, match day groundsman. It entails uh, coming in uh, anything between 9 and 11 o'clock, uh, putting the goals up, uh, pegging them down, uh, doing the corner flags and generally checking a ground is safe uh, and fit for the uh, use of our games because obviously we ground share with the rugby and that's basically the, the role of it is to make sure everything's okay with the uh, the pitch and everything and uh, obviously um, liaise with the fans and whatever, that's what I do with uh, my Wellingtons. <laughs> well what it was, over Spitty they're just a normal green, so what I did is uh, a bit of humour, um, each season here I change the colour or the pattern or whatever and it's just to um, uh, for a bit of humour, you know, for the home fans and the away, I do get uh, a bit of verbal abuse, but it's uh, it's something that you know I I'm I'm one of these, as I said, with where I was ill, um, I try to uh, humour things and everything, you know, and enjoy life. So that's one of the things I try to do, and a lot of the younger supporters they quite enjoy it actually, because they said on the away games when I've been there that uh, it's the man with the wellies like. I'm normally in around 12 o'clock, um, I'll have a walk around, just basically seeing if everything's okay, um, have a chat with the staff and everything and a couple of cups of coffee because I'm a coffee addict. Uh, we meet as directors then just to make sure that everything's in order and we're happy with what's going on. We tend to meet with the Chief Operating Officer Anthony Redwood as well um, and then some of the other club officials just to make sure that things are where they, they need to be. Um, one o'clock then I'll meet the young chairman and I'll do the tour with the young chairman which includes taking him down the dressing room, meeting the players, meeting the manager and then obviously back up into the hospitality suite then to meet the visiting directors and then generally watching the game and sort of doing it all again after the game. I tend to do um, a lot of the media work that, that goes on within the club. Um, I tend to be the focal point for the first team manager. Um, I tend to engage on a lot of the commercial type stuff that's going on um, as well. And generally uh, engaging on a pretty much a day-to-day -day basis with the club officials and, and staff. It's a feeling you know, that you can make a difference and you can do something. Um, you get to see the day-to-day -day running of a club. You get to see the faults or the faults you think are wrong with the club. And you try to change them, but you try to change them while you're thinking of being a fan. So you look at it from a fan's point of view, also a business view, you know, and a personal view, I suppose, really. And it, at times it's really difficult, really hard to separate from being a fan to being a director. My name is Lisa Savage. I've got a variety of roles at the club. I'm the club's safeguarding officer, which basically means responsibility along with the board for safeguarding child protection policies, code of conduct. So that sort of takes up time during the week and can vary from, you know, some weeks nothing, other weeks quite intensive. Um, obviously, with the junior, it goes from junior academy right the way through to the first team. And on a match day, I assist in the ticket office selling match day tickets to the public. Oh, 
My name is Katrin and I'm the club shop manager. My role is uh, buying in, looking for suppliers, keeping the contact with our fans, what they want, what they interest on and find then a way what we can do on the business side with their wishes and yeah to make our fans happy. <laughs> I've got a dual role, or certainly have had, um, with regard to the public address system and also commentating for Newport County Flair. You have to look up all sorts of things, stats such as who you're playing, the players, uh, their ages, their appearances, um, the team's results. So you've got all that to hand so that when you're referring to something, you have a very qu quick look at your notes and you're commentating on it. So. Um, also, with the PA, you have to uh, get the announcements, the sponsors, who the mascots are, details of uh, next home games, away games, um, any other announcements for social functions, birthday requests. It's quite a lot of work and it requires a lot of preparation and you've got to get it right. Good afternoon. Hold it down. Bye. I'm Peter Coughlin, my role as a club, I'm a programme seller. I've been supporting your ball game, been watching them since 1977, and eventually when uh, the club went into demise, I got involved with um, setting the club back up, and then from then I got involved with uh, people who were looking for volunteers, and I said, yeah, I usually arrive at the club about two hours before kickoff and uh, sort out the programmes and then um, get to one of my stations and uh, sell programmes to the, the, the general public. My name is Bobby Morris, um, I'm the team assistant on match days, um, my main role is to assist back in the kit man on all match days, home and away. My name is Mark Hughes, everyone calls me Sparky the Kitman, and obviously I'm the Kitman. So from Monday morning we come in, wash the kits from uh, the weekends, sort out uh, all the training kit for the boys, um, all the training equipment, uh, put all that ready, uh, ready to go up to training, um, and then that's basically kind of Monday to Friday. Uh, and then Saturday's matches, uh, pack everything up on a Friday, ready to go for the Saturday, and then uh, bring everything down to Rodney Parade for home, or halfway around the country. Uh, sometimes drive the van, or if it's far away, we'll go on an overnight stay and we'll go in the coach. We meet up with Sparky, obviously early on a Saturday morning, over the training room. Um, every game we have is an away game, because we've got no facilities at Rodney Parade. So everything's got to be picked up, home games from Rodney Parade, um, in two vehicles, and we bring everything over and prep everything for the game. My name's James Watts and I'm a commercial manager in Newport County AFC. What I normally do in a week, I make sure that the stadium is set up so the, the guys are coming and change all the advertising boards because we have a complete stadium change. All the boards are changed for our games from when the Dragons play here. So um, I do a recce of that, make sure everyone's board is in the right place. Um, next thing I do then is I go and speak to the catering team, make sure that they've got all the menus sorted, they've got all the table plans done, we'll set up the room, put up the pull-up banners of the main sponsors, put up my own versions of the table plan. Our main remit when I came here first was to increase revenue across advertising boards, programmes, hospitality, um, club events and just any other way that I could get money in really. So it's been, been an interesting role, I've had a lot, lot of say in it. Um, longest member of staff here, so I've seen I've seen a lot of change, um, but it's been an enjoyable time, yeah, definitely.
My name is Leanne Ashcroft and I run the 50-50. I gather a team of 50-50 um, sellers. We have a meeting before the game so I can give out uh, the 50-50 tickets. I tell them their destination around the ground to tell them where they're going to be selling on the day. Um, I tell them a meeting time and a meeting point. So, and then I hand over the money to the financial person who then takes the money, counts it, and then it comes back to me to say who and how, many, how much we've raised all together. Well, next season, I've got a plan already drawn up if we're going to carry it on, um, of changing the name of 50-50 to prize draw. Uh, we're also looking to bring in more than one prize, so it won't be just one person winning a collection of money. It'd be um, like two other things, so it'd be like three prizes that you can win instead of just one. Um, we're looking at doing other things like trying to get some going on the pitch and present it on the pitch instead of like over the tannoy so everyone can hear it. I've got a plan so which I'm going to meet the financial man, run it over with him, see what he thinks about it and basically go from there. My name's Chris Silverthorne, um, I'm also known as Taff Region or Taff. I'm a part of uh, formerly the County Choir but now the Amber Army. We do oh, a whole host of different things obviously. Um, the most important thing that we do is uh, generating the atmosphere within the ground at home games and taking as many as we can to away games and do a similar thing. Um, we do various volunteering, um, we engage supporters through social media with the use of uh, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Things of note that we, I could say that we've done, I think we played um, a role um, as a group in the supporters takeover. Obviously uh, we did various things for, for the trust board um, to help get, you know, get the support from the, from the fan base and uh, something I'm particularly proud of is that we managed to raise a thousand pound ourselves to obviously uh, help with that takeover. My name is uh, Colin Faulkner. I am the interim chairman for the Disabled Supporters Association. Our group is essentially uh, involved in trying to improve the match day experience for disabled supporters, whether that be ambulance supporters or uh, in a wheelchair. Um, something we're trying to look at doing as well is possibly get into a situation where we can work with local authority to encourage people to come who have perhaps used to come um, and for whatever reason in regard to disability they no longer attend so in that way potentially help increase the gate and the attendance at the games um, but we can't do that until we have got uh, the facilities that you know they're going to keep people here we don't want to invite them along and then them have a have a bad experience and then put them off for life we're quite a new group, we've been set up for just over a year now. Um, so uh, at the moment, well in the past, we have uh, we launched ourselves with a fun day um, where we raised a bit of awareness as well, but um, raised a bit of money for some projects that we want to take to do. Um, we have worked with the club over the disabled supporters guide and the policy. We had uh, an input to that last year. Um, and recently we've just managed to attain some, some blankets for so that during the cold weather um, we've got some blankets here for people that need them, whether that's disabled, whether that means people that are elderly as well need them, whoever really uses those. Um, and uh, one of our sponsors, Pure Vans, donated 20 blankets to us for those. My name's Daniel Harvey and I'm the school sport coordinator at Newport County. Uh, that entails overseeing our complete sport programme in primary schools throughout Gwent, so Blinder Gwent, Torvai, Newport, Monmouthshire and some areas of Islone as well. My name's Norman Parcell and I'm the community development officer at Newport County AFC. I'll arrive at the ground 12 o'clock, make sure everything's sorted, the goodie bags, make sure the goals are in place for the half-time kickabout, and then make sure the right number of tickets are allocated to the right, uh, the right groups. Uh, on match days, we have clubs from the local area come and visit junior sites. Um, they bring 
players, so the young players with them and parents, siblings, all that sort of thing. The kids get in free and their coaches or teachers come free and we get uh, two of the players to come and meet them and they have a question and answer with the youngsters. Then they sign some autographs and have some photos. And then it goes to the other side of the match day, so preparing the advertising on the pitch, the mats you see behind the goal, the sky bet mats, we have to pull in and do that. Um, and then as the teams walk out, they have a guard of honour. Uh, they'll have a little kick about at half time on the pitch and then to finish off the players will come out hopefully and sign some autographs and finish off their day with a win to the county. The staff have been brilliant, if I'm honest, you know, we, we've got a good, we think a good little staff now at the moment, perhaps we need one or two more people. Impressed by the other directors who are on board, the difference they've made. Um, we're on first name terms with the board of directors and um, they're on the end of the phone if I ever need to get hold of them. Beforehand, um, you know, the likes of Howard Greenough, Les Scadding, you couldn't really get hold of them. You couldn't really discuss any potential ideas you've got for the club or any things you really want to do for the club. So um, fans' ownership does allow for the groups to, uh, to get their hands on, on, on more and be able to uh, achieve more. I think we'd be the first to admit as a board we haven't got everything right um, and I sometimes think with the football club because of the passion, because of the emotion, you probably never will get everything right. It's trying to be professional and get everything as, as perfect as you can. It, it's always very difficult because you know, you've got levels of music now for instance over the tannoy and some people say oh it's too loud and others say we can't hear you, you can never win, it's, it's a very difficult thing but we, we try and do everything as professionally as we can. The long-term plan um, is for us to be sustainable. It was always our target when we took over, when we asked the fans to raise the money. That, that was the initial get us through this season without using next season's season ticket money, without using next season's hospitality money, and generally you know, become sustainable. That's our target and that's our goal and you know, that's what we're aiming for. Rome wasn't built in a day, I've heard that statement millions of times, but it is true and, and progression is something that I've seen in four years on many fronts here, not just, not just myself, but on the back of where we were to where we are now, we've, we've grown quite a lot um, and as long as everyone works as a team, then there's no reason why we can develop any further. But I actually think that we've done a pretty good job to where we are today. The club is stable financially um, to a certain extent, but a club like us will always need to have fans. I think the best thing is the fact that this club is actually in the future. Its future is in the hands of the fans, and that's got to be a good thing. So you haven't got people who can come in and walk away. There will always be fans who will step up and do the roles that we do. We're not going to be here for forever. Um, so for me, I think you know we've done a, a good job, um, and undoubtedly we'll create the foundations that others can build upon uh, in the future. You've got to be honest. We're 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 a very small club in the football league. We're probably one of the four or five smallest. So we. We have to make sure that what we do is spot on and as good as it can be because there are bigger clubs in, in the division below us. There's, there's no denying that. You just look at the attendances, the stadium sizes. So we've done well to get where we are and that, that work that's come from volunteers, previous directors, everything, we've just got to keep building on that and make sure that we stay in a football league, which I believe is where we belong. We've got a loyal court of about two, two and a half thousand fans here. Um, it would be nice... Um, to obviously get the 3,000 limit regularly, obviously that's due to results off the um, on the sorry on the field. Um, but this has always been a problem with Newport. They've always had this two two and a half thousand, and uh, the same with the rugby. They own they obviously get the uh, hard core as well. But it'd be nice if we could get a few more bums on seats, as they say, uh, to come here and uh, obviously. Um, you know, uh, cheer us on. Like. So get as many as you can, get your mates coming, get people you play, if you play on a Saturday and you haven't got a game, come over and watch. If people get a bug and they stay, it all helps to build the, uh, build the club and grow it because there are good things happening here. Um, just getting the word out, getting people coming out and contributing to it. 
now we got we, we got another 12 months in the football league at least then uh, by working together which is what we've done a lot awful lot more of in the in the uh, since we took all since the club has come as a as a fan zone and it's been more structured to us at the at present so just working together and nailing down what we what we're doing and trying to push on do you know what I mean growing steadily we've done a, a good job um, and undoubtedly we'll create the foundations that others can build upon uh, in the future you know for me personally I've been proud to be involved and proud that the club is where it is today we're going to have uh, some knockbacks and some failures along the way but the, the vital thing is to uh, be positive and go to bed at night get up the next day roll your sleeves up and have a crack and up the county roll on and see what comes next year now Amber Army